on behalf of Calicut Heritage Hall and its president, Professor M. G. S. Narayanan. Let me extend to you all a warm welcome on the occasion of the third Professor K. D. Krishna Year Endowment Lecture. A special word of warm welcome to Mrs. and Mr. Swaminathan, who have travelled from Bengaluru to take part in this function. Mrs. Swaminathan is the granddaughter of Professor Krishna Iyer. We are grateful to them for encouraging and supporting us. Ever since the idea of commemorating the rich contributions of Professor Iyer to Calicut's history, was suggested by Professor M. G. S. Narayanan. We extend a hearty welcome to Professor Rajan Gurukal, who has kindly accepted our invitation to deliver this year's endowment lecture. Professor Gurukal, an illustrious son of Kolko, needs no introduction. <coughs> he has distinguished himself both as a, as a historian and as an academic administrator having been the Vice Chancellor of Mahatma Gandhi University, Kote. This year's Professor K. V. Krishnayar scholar is Ms. Archa, who is pursuing her PhD at the Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. The topic of her research is Cosmopolitanism in Calicut City, AD 1400 to AD 1750. The award committee had no difficulty in selecting her thesis from among the several ones we received, both on grounds of quality of the synopsis and its relevance to Professor K.V. Krishnayar's legacy. Ms. Arja is at present learning Dutch language at the Leiden University, the oldest university in the Netherlands as preparation for translating documents relating to Calicut in the Dutch archives. She could not therefore receive the award in person today. Instead, she is represented by her mother, Ms. Shrimati Girija, and father, Sri C.R. Nilakandan. We extend a warm welcome to the proud parents of Archa. Before I conclude, let me give a brief account of Calicut Heritage Forum. The forum began, began in January 2008 as an informal gathering of persons interested in the history and culture of our city, who would organize occasional talks by experts on various facets of Calicut's heritage. Later, we decided on a digital presence. Our website, calicutheritage.com, today covers many aspects of the history and culture of the city. It also contains exclusive video clips of important places and events. Perhaps the most interesting content of the website for students of history and for the general readers would be the digital library, which carries digital copies of many important documents, including the original 1938 edition of Professor Krishna Iyer's magnum opus, The Zambrans of Calicut, which is now out of print. The website and allied activities were funded by a most generous grant from Tata Coffee, courtesy Mr. R. K. Krishna Kumar, who was with Tata Sons then. Two more activities of the forum deserve mention. As all of you will agree, Manajara square with its imposing colonial building of the Commonwealth Trust is the face of our city. Similar buildings around the square have been brought down by cultural vandals, many of them from the government. We wanted to try to preserve the last vestige of our European past and took up the case for preserving the building with the state government. We could persuade the director of archaeology to visit the site and give a report of its antiquity. The reluctant report, however, came after several right information petitions. More such petitions had to be filed to move the district revenue authorities 
to give a report about the land details. You can imagine the extent of vested interest working behind such things. Finally, our President Professor N. G. S. Narayanan had to move a petition before the High Court of Kerala to seek to preserve this historical building. We now have an assurance given by the present owners before the High Court of Kerala that the main building will be preserved as such and will not be demolished. Another area where we have found some success is in notifying the Manandara area as a heritage zone in the draft master plan 2035 of Calicut. We have been persistently arguing for this with the state government. However, we are aware that near notification as heritage zone will not ensure its preservation. As we have seen in a similar case, where the collision between builders and obliging officials have all but disfigured the heritage zone around Kaudiyar Palace to Andhra. We have therefore been advocating for an independent heritage commission. Our experience so far has been that raising money for a good cause is not difficult. For instance, when we toyed with the idea of setting up a heritage legal defense fund, we got enthusiastic response from many donors. But more than money, we need persons, particularly young volunteers, to take up such causes. We are convinced that there is no shortage of such volunteers among us. We would like them to join us and take charge of this interesting movement to preserve our city's heritage. Two of our volunteers would now be circulating slips among those willing to be part of this forum. We request you to fill in your details and return the slip to our volunteers. We shall contact you and follow up on your willingness to be part of this movement. With these words, I welcome you once again and would now request Professor M.G.S. Narayanan to deliver his presidential address. First of all, forgive me for sitting and talking here because of physical problems I face in standing here for a long time. Professor Kerry Krishnaya was my teacher. He was a teacher in the old Lamarins College, which was only an intermediate college when I was a student. I joined the college in 1947. Krishna was already there. Well, at the outset, let me tell you, uh, it was Professor K. V. Krishna here who introduced many of us to the field of history. In those days, though he was a teacher in the intermediate college, there were only intermediate colleges in Calicut at that time. There were only two. One was the Guru Ayurvan, not the Guru Ayurvan, the Zamanus College, and the other was the Malabar Christian College. In those days, uh, there were no study tours, no idea of actual field work and things like that in the colleges. But Krishna on his own took us to many temples uh, and palaces and uh, he, he used to take us even to places like uh, Pirnavai where the Mamakam was him uh, and uh, described to us how there was a platform there, how the camp was organized here, things like that. So we had that feel of history in his classes. With his great sonorous voice, he used to shout. He was a man with a turban and um, very short uh, in stature. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, the energy that he had, he continued to have even uh, in his late eighties. I had the good fortune when I organized the first um, Indian History Congress in Calicut <coughs> to invite him. Um, and bless us and to inaugurate some of the features there. 
even then at that time he ran about he, he gave us lectures in his late 80s and went with the participants uh, of the history congress to all sorts of places he said i will be the guide for them and went everywhere that was the man uh, his uh, work the Zamalus of Calicut was the first um, history of Calicut in English. Uh, he, in those days, he collected the references in Calicut, Grantha Avari, that is the uh, Calicut Palace Records, and uh, prepared a book in 1938. Apart from that, he had uh, <coughs> So many other papers which are not, not published even today uh, about Mahamakam, about Kali Patatan and so many other things. And these are found scattered in several journals. Then he wrote a book, the first known book on the history of Guruvayu Temple, collecting his um, information from the Guruvayu archives uh, itself. Uh, well, so we had, we decided one day, Calicut uh, Forum, Heritage Fund was found, and Sam Chandran, he has been uh, the convener, and uh, uh, he has been doing everything for that, and then only uh, for name's sake. Uh, then we had the idea that we will do something to preserve the memory of uh, Krishna here, who was one of the earliest in these parts. Uh, to think about the history of Kalika and the history of Kerala. There is a history of Kerala also by him, apart from the history of uh, Kalika and Lamarus, and uh, 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 the history of Guruvayur Temple. So, among the, uh, this heritage forum started um, the Krishna Iyer Endowment Lecture. We are thankful to the how many members of uh, Professor Krishnaya? <coughs> um, and uh, we have here Srimadhi Parodi Swaminathan and her husband. He, he refuses to come over here, but he's also there. And uh, they have very kindly decided uh, to share the expenses of the enrollment lecture. There is a competition every year, uh, in which uh, the research scholars who, who, who are working on topics of interest to Krishnaya and in, to Kalike uh, are free to participate. Uh, this year's uh, paper, uh, yeah, um, there were several applications and several papers were sent to us. Uh, the judging committee decided that Arsha, Arsha Nilagandhan, okay. Arsha Nilagandhan, um, who is a PhD candidate working in Jawaharlal Nehru University in New Delhi, but presently in the Netherlands uh, you know, with a fellowship of the study of medieval Dutch language and records relating to these areas. She has uh, written a paper, her paper on cultural landscape and urbanism of medieval cities, situating cosmopolitanism in Calicut city around uh, 1400 to 1750 AD. That has been selected uh, for the uh, enrollment fellowship. Um, then we have invited Professor Rajin Gurukar, as mentioned here. He was <coughs> in many places, and then he was um, he retired as the Vice Chancellor of the Mahatma Gandhi uh, University at Kote. And even after that, he has been working in, in Bangalore in the Indian Institute of what is that? And science in the Institute of Science. For some time, he has come down for this lecture. I remember Rajan 
as a very young student who passed, passed out of the Brennan College Tertiary, um, who took his MA in 1972. I suspect that though he scored very high marks and first class and all that, he was quite innocent of history, was historical research. Probably you might not have heard the word research even while he was a student in Brennan College. That was the way in which our colleges were constituted. That was the way in which our students uh, did. They were given some notes and some texts and some lectures, but the research was not an area of interest for uh, teachers and students of uh, colleges in our area in Kerala. Uh, then we had the good fortune to have him <coughs> participate uh, immediately after his, his, his MA degree uh, in 1973. In the next year, uh, we held uh, an, a summer institute in history in our department in Calicut University. That was the first summer institute in history in India because <coughs> somehow or other, Though the